Hello, I'm on, I'm now broadcasting live and I am doing this for the first time ever so you're going to have to bear with me for a moment while I um, figure out what to do. So I think now what I need to do is I need to press this button here. Hopefully we have a Nadine Shah to go live with. She's not arriving just yet. She, oh, there she is. We click on there. I press add. And hopefully we're waiting for Nadine Shah. who's hopefully going to arrive. Um, apparently waiting. Oh, hey. hello. hello, buddy. How are yeah. you? I'm all right. I've been better. You're quite quiet. I've got a thing. I've got a thing I want to do. Check this out. Look. Mm -hmm. Right, ready? Yeah. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Nadine Shah. Oh God, hold on. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't work. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Try again. Try again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Nadine Shah. <laughs> smart you are you've got your suit jacket on your gorgeous shirt and i'm just in my big old lounge it's right. it's just, it's, you don't it's all right it's fine how are you doing um i'm doing all right you know it's uh obviously it's all a bit mad isn't it but for me yeah. it's kind of i'm kind of used to this lifestyle kind of because it's like yeah because i'm quite a reclusive person anyway yeah and i spend loads of time i don't have like a um, my own studio so I work from home anyway yeah um and I'm kind of used to working on my own and being by myself for a lot of the time yeah so it's it's starting it's, I think when you're told you can't do something mm. that's you why you want to do it more the itch now yeah yeah so what um, is it you're itching to do what is it what you want to do that you can't do I, the main thing the worst thing the kind of the sad thing is not seeing family yeah that's the worst thing I mm. mean, you know, the independence of being able to travel and go around more. Yeah. That's what I'm really aching to do. Yeah. But I guess there's a big bunch of you where you are, isn't there? So there's all the kids there as well. I've got all the kids. I've only got two of the kids. Mm -hmm. So there's four of us. But luckily, one of the kids plays drums and the other one plays keyboards. So we can, we can, you know, we can try. We can hopefully do something. Yeah, I want to hear what they've been creating and rehearsing. We haven't started yet, but we're going to. We're going to, Iggy's, Iggy's just up to his neck in schoolwork. They've got like a massive timetable for him. He's just like on his computer all day long. Um, and Luna's um, making biscuits. Legend. Yeah. Um, so are you in London? No, I'm in Ramsgate. Ramsgate. In fact, can I, show, I can show you guys where I am. So it's my boyfriend's flat. Right. And I'm really grateful to be here because we're by the sea. So this is pretty amazing to be by the sea. Oh, it's it's lush. It just means like obviously there's a balcony here. Oh, so it just means that we have this balcony and there's like a sea view. So there's all the kind of even just sitting on the couch and then yeah. I'm just like I've got the windows open and I'm listening. I can get the sea air coming in. Yeah. So I feel very grateful and super lucky for that. And I think that's keeping me pretty sane. Yeah. But you kind of still see life going on as well. And you can walk on the walk on the seafront and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we can go for lovely, like, coastal walks. Yeah. And the weather's lush, so I'm pretty lucky that we've got that. Yeah. It's and what's the good. shops like? Is there massive queues and empty supermarkets, or is it reasonable? You know what? I didn't want to tell people about it, but the closest shop to us is a Waitrose, <laughs> like a walk away. And mm. um, it's just, so I've been cooking loads, and I've been popping into Waitrose, and it's not that busy. It's like a one-in, one-out thing. But it's like I'll go in to get a roast chicken, but the only thing they have left is Poussin. And I'm like... <laughs> yeah, quail, yeah. I've got these tiny, posh little baby chickens. Yeah. So the other day I was, I was I posted a video of me cooking the Poussin, this lovely dish. And one of my mates just texted me going like, Nadine, you need to get real and get to grips. You can't be posting that kind of stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, what? It's a little um, you've, you've, have you been posting lots of... I was going to ask you about, because I have actually got some questions to ask, to talk to you, things to talk to you about. Yeah. Um, and you, you've done a lot of, you've got a lot of food as a big, suddenly become quite a big theme, isn't it? In your artwork. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of food as well. I mean, there's tons of it. It's not just like sandwich. There's a lot. There's a, there's lot. a lot of food. Did you eat it all after the photo shoot? 
Well, one of the things that I'd specified when we were making them was that I didn't want there to be too much waste. Yeah, so you ate it all on your own. There were some things that were just minging that you just you don't want to try. It's like some really awful combinations of savory and sweet that were just minging looking. Um, but majority of it I ate. But it was all there was this. Can you remember in the seventies? There was like my mum had these cookbooks. Even though I'm born mm. in the eighties, but Margaret had, Patton. Yes. Yeah. Like seventies dinner party. Yeah. My mum had all those, and they're just the ugliest looking creations. Yeah. But they're also like fascinating. Mm. They look kind of, um, well, just really surreal. Yeah, and really it was weird. like at a, at a point in the 70s where nothing you were making was allowed to look like the food you were cooking. So yeah. Like, this is a chicken, yeah. but it looks like a pineapple. Or this is yeah. a fish, but it looks like a flower. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but then for some people, that was the only kind of opportunity to be creative, wasn't it? You know. That's kind of what I was saying, because although you have like, because with the theme of the new album, we're talking a lot about gender roles. Right. So, well, aesthetically, I love the 70s. And mm. because we've come through the 60s where, you know, or where there's been a real sexual revolution for women. Yeah. But actually not much has really changed. Mm. Women are still in their kitchens, mm. uh, you know, and still housewives. But it seems like it's like all the creativity they put into their food. Mm. So I can just imagine this housewife drinking, you know, a bottle of Blue Nun. Yeah. With, like, you know, Demi Russo in the background. Yeah. Um, whilst making these these food dishes, which look yeah. pretty gnarly and insane, kind of a product of what's going on in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crisis, so, crisis, creative crisis food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to make a kind of, I'm going to make Buckingham Palace out of potato uh, of chips. This is what I think we've all been too tasteful, mind my pun, with our cooking recently. Yeah. We should, we should get more creative. Get more so, crazy. Yeah, we need more had a, Have you ever had a rider, a weird rider, anywhere that looks anything like any of that stuff? Mine is so, so dull. I mean, you've seen our riders, they're so dull. But I've heard of loads of people that are much more interesting. Um, I mean, I love that story where it's like, um, Nick Cave, he, re he tells a story about uh, Nina Simone. And she's um, like, he puts on this show at the Royal Festival Hall and she plays, he curates it one year. And she says, I want champagne, I want cocaine and sausages. <laughs> <laughs> so they just have to run out and get a champagne, cocaine and sausages. <laughs> I've not asked for any of the above there. Uh, no, have you? What's the yeah, name? we have. We had one because this is why I mentioned it because I had one that really reminds me of your artwork. Where um, if there's anyone from Acoustic Today that I'm watching this now, they're gonna they're gonna remember this. It was hilarious. It was in, Bel I think it was Belgium, and and we went in and it was like an entire pyramid of cheese. It was big as well. I mean, it was like like sort of a, a good a good foot high, and it was loads of just cheese everywhere and then radishes and all sorts of gar like like your like your thing look like a kind of someone who tried to make a kind of uh, ornamental palace out of uh, out of cheese and and deli and, and ham and meats and cheeses but it was you know we ate it all and when we after when, once we kind of removed all the cheese there was this structure made of kind of foil that they'd constructed underneath to lay the cheese on i mean it was incredible it was literally like you walk in the dressing room it was a really small dressing room so this thing was really dominant in the dressing room as well like a like a kind of edible firework display you walk in and, and it's just like ridiculous thing it's incredible and you requested that no oh no, right no, no, <laughs> yeah right no we didn't request it but that would that would we should have then taken a photograph of it and insisted on it for every single gig shouldn't we after that yeah, so just say them like you know be cre like whenever you put down your rider specifications just you know be creative and be make creative it. but you could even say you know make us smile you know just do something make a bit us smile with the cheeses yeah just do something and make us laugh a bit yeah we really need to up our game with that piece it's well i've got i've got time to think about it now yeah we've got time to think about our rider haven't we we've got time to think about a lot of things Ugh. yeah are you, are you having to restructure your year somewhat? I mean, I'm, I'm saying this if I don't know, but I, obviously I'm in your band, so of course I yeah. do know, but other people who are watching us don't know. Yeah, but I think this is the thing. Um, often you, I felt like it was just me, like, why is this happening to me? It was like an initial thing, which is a really selfish place to go. Um, but there's so many artists right now who are, having to, who are putting albums out. 
and who have like, cancelled shows and they're mm. doing album campaigns and it's heartbreaking for loads of reasons because he works so hard on something mm. and you just want to give it the best chance that it has mm. and especially with with this album i i love it and i think mm. it's very, a very joyous sounding album yeah and I was just so looking forward to going out and playing some shows, especially yeah. countries we haven't been to for a while. And yeah. also, it's my bread and butter. Yeah. Financially. So it's all terrifying. And all of a sudden, overnight, it all goes. And you're just like, <gasps> but what I've noticed is um, there's like, there's a, there's a lot of people who are, there's a lot of like solidarity towards artists, mm. right? Yeah. And I've got loads of help from companies like Help Musicians. Mm. Amazing. Me too, actually. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Spotify, they're trying to do something now as well. Yeah. And But the fan base themselves, the audience, they're doing as much as they can to help artists right now. Like, okay, can mm -hmm. I buy a t-shirt? I'll buy a t-shirt. Yeah. You know, and they're, and they're really, there's, I find I've had so much more interaction with my fans yeah. on a personal level because I am more engaged now and I am checking Facebook messages and Instagram messages, whereas before I wouldn't really. Well, that's all there is now <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. You can't go out and play a gig to people. So your only interaction with, with people is, is through social media. Mm. Um, and, and I'm the same, it's, it's just like, it's something I kind of kept kept up and was interested in and looked at, but, yeah. but now it's like I've kind of realized that in the last week, my job has kind of changed really. I mean, we, we were gonna go on tour in April we had a quite a big tour booked in April, um, which we've had to postpone as well. So it's like, because our album came out on Friday, and it's, uh, oh. so it's, yeah, it's like, we have to keep, well, I mean, we've got so much energy. Like you say, you've built up quite a head of steam over a couple of years where you've been working on the album, and you've also releasing anything and making it fly. The planets have to, so many different elements have to align in such a perfect way. And you do all that alignment, and you get it to the point where it can happen, and then, the, you know the arsenal's out of it so you've got to try and keep something going and actually it's maybe much more much more resourceful i think yeah you know and well one thing i've bloody learned is that i've got to um i've really got to up my technical game me too god it's just because everyone's getting in touch nadine do you want to do a little um we could do a little live session for us yeah I'm like, how how yeah a live session for you um this is this is even this conversation we're having now on Instagram. Only I saw a couple of people doing it a, 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 like last week and was just like, "Oh, I didn't know you could do that." Okay, yeah. let's do that. You know, it's a really, like... it's a really great tool. But I love seeing how like creative people are getting with with like the limited resources that they have. Yeah, like for right now, you've just made this really fun background. Yeah, it's just can... an old painting we've had kicking around. It's the really? it's got, like, you've got your shirt and tie on all this. But I'm also, I'm at my boyfriend's flat and I was only intending to come for the weekend. Right. <laughs> then self-isolation set in. Yeah. So I had nothing. Like I've been wearing his t-shirts. Oh, uh, you know, right. Okay. I was starting to get really depressed about even, because you know what I'm like, I like to dress smartly most. Yeah. <laughs> even indoors. Like I don't really own any casual wear. So yeah, right. Um, and it was getting me down and I, I realized that was a, that was one of the, how was that? it was having a really big effect on my mental health just kind yeah. of dressing sluggishly and making my posture sluggish yeah. so i went online and i bought a bunch of like fancy kind of like nicer looking casual wear but you know yeah. not, but also being aware about money as well but yeah not having all your objects around you you know like yeah just you take little things for granted like you know just t even tiny little objects that i collect just my things yeah uh, musical equipment and stuff yeah, it really makes you appreciate and value your home mm. and that environment. Yeah, it um, does. And it's also making me think. Okay, as soon as this is over, I know that I'm going to rent somewhere without. Well, it can't be London because I know I now need a lot of space. Yeah, it has to have outside space, separate kitchen area, entire yeah. area from a sitting room because otherwise, me and my boyfriend are going to kill each other. Yeah. Um, should we have to self isolate again? I'm like, right that's it move out to the middle of nowhere where we can afford big space i mean do you miss not being able to just kind of sing like loudly i mean you, i noticed you put something up on i think it was twitter the other day where you were singing quietly yeah. which was probably nice to do but do you not miss just being able to kind of just really belt yeah i'd said this to my partner matthew i was saying um i've had some really bad anxiety recently which you know everyone's been having their own versions for so many different yeah. And I said, one of the things I think 
could be part of the problem is the fact that I'm not singing loudly. Yeah. Mm. And because uh, it's a real great, like, um, it's a great use of energy, mm. the bell energy and stuff. Yeah. It makes me feel, it kind of like, I guess it kind of centers me and I do it so often. Uh, like using all your, your lung capacity as well. And yeah. So we've got this balcony at the front. And I will let you know, you've seen all these beautiful videos of people singing on their balconies in Italy yeah. and in Spain. So I'm currently working on my opera. So you're gonna you're gonna go on the balcony and just sing ladies for ladies for babies to talk to top of your voice. Yeah. Although, right, true true story. The other night, so every morning I go on the balcony and because you can see there's it's the um it's a seafront here. Yeah. So everyone jogs past all the joggers. And so I'll go in the morning, I usually get up an hour before my boyfriend and I go and I have a cigarette and I'm like mm. <laughs> and I play this game and I only told him about it yesterday i've been doing it for a week but it's just waving at people passing by right. and seeing how many people i can get to either wave back at me or have a conversation with me oh wow and you collect points each time right and one time i was doing it um to show matthew it and i was we were both a bit drunk on the balcony we had glasses of wine and i was like hi hi getting people to wave back and this one guy's jogging and he's like are you Nadine Shaw? And I'm like, uh, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but then I thought, you know, it could, you see all these videos of people doing things for their community, like musicians providing music in such a dark time is, it's a lush thing. I don't know if it's my job to be doing it, but I imagine if someone, you know, could hear your saxophone being played in the background, that would be a beautiful thing. But well, I did it the other day. I, I did a, yeah. Chris just kind of talked me into doing a live performance in the garden. He was just like, just, it's the sun's out, get your horn, go in the garden and do a live Insta thing, you know. I was like, okay, I'll do it, you know. I was just kind of standing there in the garden with Luda holding the phone and I suddenly went, I'm, re I'm going to play my saxophone outside because obviously when you play the saxophone, you can't, you can play it quietly, but most of the time it's, pre it's a pretty loud instrument. It's not like a guitar or something or a keyboard, you can hide it. Um, and, and normally it's the effort is to try and keep all the doors shut even on a really hot day you've got to keep all the doors shut you've got to keep everything shut so because no one wants to hear you playing scales you know yeah. so I just kind of ran into this situation I was suddenly just about to play just thinking oh my god all my neighbours are now going to just like they're going to hate me but, and I was too late it was already rolling so I had to just do it and it was fine it was nice but I did I, it was going to go through my mind of just like what are people thinking you know so I was trying to play as quietly as I could and it was I mean you know it was it was nice because like 20 people kind of watched it and then it was over after like five minutes or something it was over and it was a really weird feeling of like 20 kind of virtual people in my garden and then they just all evaporated <laughs> and there's just me and Luna in the garden again <laughs> and nice. I think that that's a really beautiful beautiful thing it was nice yeah that kind of thing makes me get a bit tearful if I hear it you know if I can hear some but I'm even watching the videos of people playing violin on their bus. yeah I'm just in tears watching all that mm. oh that, no that's beautiful more of that, please. You should go and film yourself on the beach or do some stuff on the beach. Have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Beach at dawn. Beach at dawn. But this is the thing. I think I've, I feel a lot of pressure to like, because there's so many artists currently that are being really creative with this format. And, you know, yeah. they're thinking of really funny content and all the rest of it. And I'm like. Mm. <sighs> yeah, but you can still be you, though. You don't have to be someone else. <laughs> Me on the beach, like, Hi. I mean, this is yeah. I'm running out of ideas. I've got to get more creative with it because it's not even just, it's not the idea of when I have people like record labels and stuff talking to me going, you have to post more. People yeah. are saying you need to like, be more in touch with people. For me, if it's presented to me in a kind of business opportunistic way, I'm like, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Post. but actually because I'm taking solace in seeing people's videos. Yeah. I, I and that it, it's keeping us all entertained and it's yeah. connected. So I don't resent doing it right now because yeah, yeah. I'm able to connect to so many people and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely thing. I did a thing for um, Clash Magazine on album launch day on, on Friday where yeah. I just kind of got some some Melt Yourself Down backing tracks and kind of and, and, and muted myself and, and played it through the PA really loud. I mean, I did an Insta, uh, Facebook Live and, uh, and I played along with the with the tracks and answer questions and stuff like that and had some rum and it was pretty like a hundred people watching it and it was like a hundred people in my little studio 
um, it was amazing. And then it was, it was, and then everyone was like, I'll do it again. So I did it all again, played all the tracks again. Um, people asking me about my skateboard, took it out to the garden, showing the skateboards in the garden and stuff. It was amazing. And then it was like, okay, well, we're done now. Thanks very much. Bye. And then sort of hung up. And then it was just me in my studio again. <laughs> it was really weird. Having been like a hundred people in here and it was just me. It was, it was quite, it was nice. It was really unusual. It's odd because it's like a live thing, but it's it's not at the same time. So you're on your own, but you're not. And it's quite odd, especially in a room you spend so much time on your own in. Suddenly you're it's just the same as normal, apart from there's 100 people watching you. It's yeah. really strange. Exactly. It's, cool, exactly. it's a really cool thing. I love it. And there's even, there's certain artists like Laura Marling. I like mm. her. Mar yeah. her like, like really simple guitar tutorials. Mm. And they're lovely. Right. Mm. I mean, there are some... You're flicking through your timeline on on Instagram, mm, and it's mm. like another like uh, uh, another mm. like really lame song about staying indoors with someone with an guitar <laughs> like uh, I'm missing the supermarket and connections. I'm like, oh, shut up, mate. <laughs> yeah. I think the last thing that I want to hear is songs about isolation because they'll they'll date very quick as well. Because yeah. once once it's over, we will not want to remember this. Yeah. And well, you know. Well, not in that. We don't want to sit and then relive like, blah, blah, blah. no, because it's going to be such a harrowing time for so many people who have, for the, for mental health reasons, for financial yeah. reasons, you know, not seeing their families. In fact, when this is all over, we want to be like, yeah, banging pots and pans and listening to melt yourself down. Yeah. <laughs> but I even think currently, the music I'm what I'm listening to because it's, and I'm quite enjoying this because it's my boyfriend's record collection. It's not right. It's exploring. Exploring loads of different things. So my favourite record of his to play at the minute. I'll show you it. What is it? It's a it's a Hawaiian thing, like a compilation thing. Someone's just saying here we'll remember like stories from the war. Yeah, but it, I I think that's true. I think there will be lots of things like you know, harrowing stories. But then there's also that kind of beautiful spirit where it's like this got us through it, and yeah, you kind of want to rejoice here. Is my new favourite album. Oh, what's that? It's all backwards. I can't see what oh, it says. Oh, it's backwards? Yeah, <laughs> like a mirror. How, what <laughs> if I do this? Hang on, wait there. If I do this. Yeah, if you flip it round. Okay. Can you guys 50 see guitars. Visit Hawaii. Oh, Hawaiian guitar. I love Hawaiian guitar. It is incredible. But it's beautiful, yeah. Set. And this is like my it's little... It's got a lot of records there, isn't it? Oh, there's so many. Oh, yeah, loads. Oh, wow, then... what a treat. And then there's loads in like another little room he has as well. So it's what's that keyboard as well? What is this? I've been a Casio Tone three zero one. Classic. And it's great. It's just got like a little. It's like a little drum machine beat thing on it, and there's like some really great organ sounds as well. So it means I've been able to play a bit of like a bit of piano as well. And we've been oh, we've I've promised. Well, I promised myself. I was like, whatever we do, we can't let anyone see this. Because we've been making music together. Oh, right. Like, is it good? Those, yeah, it's all right, but it's a bit like all couples making songs together. Uh, like, nothing wrong with that. La, 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 la. That's good. That's so good. There's a bit of that as well. So that's yeah. loads of fun. Yeah. But yeah, I've still got some toys to play with. But you've got like a whole home studio there, right? I've got a studio, yeah. Oh. I've, got a, I've got a garden garden room. Yeah. Ooh. Which I thought was soundproofed when they built it. They said, "Yeah, it's soundproofed," but it turns out it's not. <laughs> so if there's someone in next door's garden having a chat, I could kick up on the microphones in here. But you know, I, I, I don't mind. But you've not had complaints from people for being loud and stuff like no, that. No, I haven't. And I had, but I had to write to all my neighbours on Friday when I was doing the collapse piece because um, I had to turn it all up to like eleven so that when I played the saxophone. The, the music coming through the PA was the same volume as me playing fully as loud as I can on the saxophone, oh, but it's obviously yeah, quite loud. So um, I had to write to them all, but no one complained. No one's ever complained, actually, where, in all the places I've lived in. I don't know why, I used to think, it was weird, I used to live in these places, like these flats, where I just like have a room in a flat and, and all the walls are plasterboard. And I used to practice the saxophone in there for like, just hours and hours and hours every day and, and never sort of thought twice about whether anyone would mind but it's just the loudest and most awful thing in the world just some idiot playing scales all day but you know no one seemed to mind i love it even i even enjoy listening to you sound check oh <laughs> believe it or not i'm like oh, come on. i don't get bored of it yet i've also i find it really difficult sometimes when we're playing certain when we play certain songs on tour 
yeah. and, and you do like something on saxophone that I love. And I just want to go like, yeah, that's immense. And like start talking forget. to you in the set. That's why I keep this kind of stern face. Oh yeah, it's a serious topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to ask you about like this new album as well. I've got some questions for you. Because mm -hmm. um, you told me about the artwork and then, but what's, it's called Kitchen Sink, right? Yeah. Why is it called Kitchen Sink? There was a, like, a movement of sorts, mainly in cinema, um, kitchen sink films. Oh, kitchen sink dramas. Okay. Dramas and films. Yep. Um, and I did want to write a lot about, because they, they were kind of really realistic portrayals of everyday life. They were really yeah. gritty. You know, yeah, really was, gritty, yeah. Nothing was really, like, nothing was jazzed up. Um, I know Scott Walker was a massive fan. Right kitchen sink dramas and he wrote is a lot of his lyrics were very influenced by them as well um have you analyzed those have you looked in have you is he is a big influence lyrically uh, scott walker yeah massively but i don't think my i mean i wish my lyrics sounded like his but i don't really i don't tend to take inspiration from um songwriters for lyrics right mainly, mainly overheard conversations oh really yeah, not all, all prose as well. Not so much. Is that, is, that, is that always been the case? You've always written from overheard conversations? Mainly. Even if it's like dialogue in a film or in a play. I normally Why do you take notes? Um, if, normally it's always a phrase that will resonate with me and I have it stuck in my head and then I'll expand on the idea later on and kind of create a story. Okay, so you use them as building blocks and then you build from, from those building blocks. Yeah, I think that's normally the case. So it's like, oh, that's really interesting. So what, and what is it, do you have a sort of general pattern of the sort of things that usually resonate or is it different all the time or? Yeah, and that's one thing I find really frustrating. Oh, and that's my, like, that method? I've, I've got to change it because it's like, oh, another miserable, oh, you should be complaining again. Oh, where's Nadine Shaw? What's that about <laughs> now? Oh. But, I don't um, know. I don't feel like that because I listen to a lot of your in preparation for this. I listen to a lot of the the older stuff, which I've I've listened to bits of when I've been learning one of the songs, but for some reason haven't ever gone back and listened to the whole album. You know, yeah. which I'm, I'm ashamed to admit. But um, we listened to them all yesterday, and um, yeah, there's some, a lot of metaphor. So much metaphor. It doesn't really feel like you're moaning. Yeah, I think the <laughs> I think the first album lyrically is probably one of the ones I'm most proud of. Yeah. There's some there's some songs on that where like I've I've listened back to the album not so long ago, um, but I hadn't listened to it for years. And then there's one song on it called Filthy Game, and I was listening to it just thinking like, how the bloody hell did she do that? Yeah. Like, because I I wouldn't be able to write something so prophetic now. I don't think or as skilled. It was. How really... old is it? Uh, I think that album came out seven eight years ago. Maybe right. eight years ago, but I would have written that song about 12 years ago. Right, okay. It took me and Ben a bloody long time to get that album out. But um, yes, yeah, so I was a really young a young person when I wrote that, and I yeah. can't imagine myself achieving that level of writing again. But you no, know, a different style maybe. I'm not, I don't think I'm just being down on myself, but I think that was one of those ones where it was the peak of a certain style of writing when I was very young. I don't yeah. Know. But yeah, my attitude changes and styles change now. Yeah, but you're probably too close to what you're doing now to be able to say, I mean, you'll probably come back to what you're doing now in 10 years' time and think the same thing, you know, look, looking back on it and going, oh, wow, you know. you know, And, and I think that's a, that's a good sign, isn't it? Because it means that you're growing and moving forward. Yeah. You're, more, you're moving away from, you're not just staying where you are and, and like, oh, I'm still doing that thing. It's not like listening back to it and going, oh, I really should stop doing that now. <laughs> you know, you're, you're thinking, okay, that was a completely different uh, yeah. creative process. But I mean, especially with, but with artists like yourselves, um, like yourself, it's like you've been in so many different groups, mm. so many different musical outfits. Mm. And I, I get really jealous of like, of, of that because it's very difficult for me to join many other different side projects because then it means kind of, because I'm, I'm not a, a skilled musician as such, you know, like guitar or anything else. It means I have to be the lead singer essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you can't really, you're then limited to as many projects that you can get involved in. Whereas yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I don't even know you've been in one 
and then someone goes and I'll be reading who's on the credits and I see your name I'm like what little cheeky how do you get on that one? <laughs> that must be really exciting to do all of that yeah it's, it's, it's good I mean it's it's funny though because I a lot of the effort for me over the years has been to try and get to the space where you are where I'm sort of working on my own projects and sort of really trying to focus on my own projects and so you know at one point it was hard to to do to get any kind of to sort of move forward my own thing because I was just so many bands and there was never a moment you know um but then over the years it's been about it's kind of reducing the number of projects because I mean you just have ideas for bands all the time and I have to sort of stop myself having ideas oh we could do that we could do that I could do that I could do that and you end up thinking yeah but I've got to I've got to kind of really try and I'm one of those people where I'll start a book and get bored halfway through and then start another book and I've got like a pile of 20 unfinished books you know and it's like I sort of feel like I've got to try and stick to stick to this this project because um because I, I want to sort of see what happens next I'm sort of really keen to see what happens next yeah. and that stuff down and which isn't going to happen if I do too many side projects <laughs> also to like give something the attention it deserves yeah, no, yeah, exactly. And, and nurture it properly. But for anybody listening who hasn't met you before, I mean, you could make, this is the thing I should do. We'll be in like the van on tour and we'll go from, I don't know, even in a three hour journey and we get out. You always, you get in the van, laptops out, headphones on. Don't talk to anyone in the van. I do the same. And you're just there rattling away. Get to the venue and it's like, oh, I've just wrote an album. Oh, of course you have. No. <laughs> no, but you're just you're constantly creative. That's because I'm really slow. It's because I work really, really slowly. And I've probably yeah. done about, created about four bars in that three hours, you know. So I've got, I've got to just do it all the time to get any kind of like output at all. <laughs> Somebody, you can, I didn't realise, just notice it now. People are asking. Here's a question. What is that? Do you, do you think you lose those perspectives you had when you were younger or can you keep hold of them as you age? That's from Ben Tanzi Music. Do you think you lose those perspectives you had when you were younger or can you keep hold of them as you age? Hmm. It depends, depends what you mean. It's like, um, I've, I've not become, I don't think I've become, I've seen a lot of music. I, I hope I'm answering the question and not getting it confused. But I've seen a lot of people become very jaded the longer they're in the music industry. Hmm. And so their perspective on music and music making seems to change as they grow older. Hmm. Almost like they, they live a lot of the love for it. Hmm. Um, but then again, I see some musicians, I mean, Scott Walker, for example, he only got more and more and more interesting and more experimental. Yeah, yeah. And it felt like his perspective with music, it felt like he only just started to love it more and more all the time. Yeah. He kept learning more from it. Yeah. And I, I feel like that. I feel less obsessed with the idea. I've got no obsession whatsoever with fame. And I right. definitely used to. Um, right. No desire for fame whatsoever. When you said you used to, does that, was that before or after your first album? Before first album. So by the time you were actually in a position where you could develop that kind of side of it, if you wanted to, you'd, you'd lost all interest in it. Yeah. I right. really want to be regarded as like... Um, I, I like the idea of being regarded highly by a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> by, by, right, okay. But you want them to not remember who you are once they've regarded you highly or something like that. All right, I just, I just, I just call fame a different thing now. Right? But I think my, Maybe my, notoriety is, I don't know. But did you ever have that kind of desire for fame, like that hunger for it? From every, well, everything I've read from a, a lot of because I'm quite an avid interview reader and a lot of stuff I've read, a lot of people say it's all a bit of a pain in the ass. I mean, David Bowie's an interesting guy because he, I mean, for, in that respect, because he said that, you know, when he was younger, he was hungry as hell for, to get famous and to get successful. And when he first got successful, he was really, really happy. But then over time, fame became a real pain in the ass. And there's a book I've just finished reading actually um, called Bowie, A Life by this guy called Dylan Jones. It's an amazing book. It's basically anecdotes about Bowie from all sorts of people all around him. And it's chronological, but it's so much detail as you move through his life. And him and John Lennon became really good friends. And they used to spend just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours getting off their heads and talking about fame. And fame was a really, really big issue that they talked about. It baffled them both. And you can imagine Lennon's take on fame. I mean, Jesus, fame. there aren't many people ever who were as famous as him. And they used to sit there for hours and hours and hours just getting mashed and, and, and talking about fame. And then they wrote that song, Fame. He wrote that song um, 
in the studio pretty much when Lennon was in the studio that day. Um, Lennon came to the studio, I think were, they were in LA. And I can't remember which album it is exactly now. Maybe one of the people listening can help. I think it might be Young Americans, actually. I can Google it. Um, and uh, they just started making a song together and they ended up making that song Fame. But That's he said cool. that Lennon works ex exceedingly fast in the studio, so they managed to get this song together in one day. Um, but yeah, that was the big issue for them. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. It always seems like sometimes you think it might be easier, might make life a bit easier. Like if you if you're famous and you do a gig, then thousands of people are going to come to your gig. Or if you want to do a little side project, you can do it and expect a relative amount of of um, not money as such, but just sort of success, and just being able to do it, just being able to afford to keep it going and do it without it being too much of a pain in the ass to sort of launch a project or to keep something going um but you know I, I, but i think it, from what i can tell a lot of people a lot of people who are extremely famous just yeah i find it they, they, they said that you can't imagine what it's like to lose that anonymity yeah. until you've actually lost it but it's all, there's it's really interesting because me and my boyfriend matty we were having a conversation about fame like last night and the night before because obviously in this point of isolation Mm. when you're living with a partner in a small space we're in a one bed flat here yeah and we're not used to like you know being in this intense of an environment yeah um and i can see you know on some certain days his mental health is really low and on certain days mine is and i was talking to him about his and what i forget a lot of the time is that because because i'm a relatively famous musician um i constantly get uh, positive reinforcement from people yes so like you get an applause on stage or you yeah. get you make something and it's appreciated and respected and uh, yeah. you know, loved and yeah. adored and you get revered yeah. whereas many people every day make things or do things every day they're doing things but they're thankless tasks yeah and it's a, so i get a i do think about fame, fame a lot and of the effect that it has on me and my behavior and how i treat people as well yeah and so it just means i I have to remember sometimes that I have to be, I have to give more positive reinforcement to my partner. Yeah. So he's currently writing a script. And I don't, oh, I don't often tell him, you know, you're brilliant. And mm. I realize I need to tell him more often. Cause because you're the only one who's going to turn that. I, I get told it all the time, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. That's not normal. It's not yeah. normal. So, but it's also good to always give that back as well. And yeah. be aware that that's not a normal thing, you know? Yeah. That's one thing about fame I find interesting. Mm. It's that constant, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat on the back. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, yeah. everyone deserves, everybody deserves, but, you know, the people in the supermarkets right now, documentary ca filmmakers behind the cameras, lots of people don't get the, the praise or the thank you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely right, yeah. Um, someone saw you, someone saw you at BST, Nadine, you were incredible. Was that the one in Hyde Park, BST? Oh, British yeah, the, foreign, the British summertime one. That's from moderation, but with an X instead of an O. Sorry. Oh, oh you could have been. That was, when was that? That was, that was summer last year. Summer last year, yeah. That was that huge that one in Hyde Park. Oh, Can you remember it? It was a really hot day. It was really fun. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it, love. Who else? We, someone else. If I tap on the screen, we can get this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so the person who asked us about fame said, yeah, I was thinking about what you were saying about listening to a song from 12 years, or not fame, about the youthful attitude. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about what you were saying about listening to a song from 12 years ago and thinking you couldn't write like that now. That's what you were saying. Yeah, I think yeah. that also it is that I wrote a different, the different styles. Um, yeah. I was reading a lot of like, I was reading so much poetry when I was younger, like loads of romantic poets and reading like books like by authors like Dostoevsky and things like that. And so yeah. I think that, that bleeds into how you write and the rhythm of how you think. Whereas now I watch a lot of like, I watch Fleabag, you know, yeah. Phoebe Waller-Bridge. And that, that's definitely, Phoebe Waller-Bridge has definitely influenced this new album. Yeah. When it comes to that kind of tongue in cheek element. Yes. And, there's adoption of characters as well. Yeah. So I think that's. Cool. I was going to ask you about yeah because the album's called Kitchen Sink. Oh yeah. You're saying about Kitchen Sink dramas, but there's an element of sort of is there an element of being kind of stuck indoors with the album? 
yourself? There it's is all no. a bit coincidence, but you've, uh, you've written an album about being stuck indoors and now you are stuck indoors. Is that... <laughs> yeah, my, whole, my record label are having a field day. They're like, yes. you can do like, you can do sessions from the kitchen sink. And I'm like, simmer down. Everyone stop getting excited. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But you've been doing some, you've been posting some, some cooking and stuff on, on, on Insta, haven't you? Some, until my friend said, your cooking is so middle class. You've got to cook <laughs> it. She's like, so far this week, you've made an aubergine parmigiana, a spaghetti vongole, and poussin packed it in. And I was like, what? What is it? What? Because I'm northern, it doesn't mean I can do, you know, fancy that. Um, there'll be more cooking, more curries and things like that. But as it's, well. not as if you're, it's not as if your album artwork is presenting a really sort of dowdy and um, colourless type of food. It's quite the opposite, isn't it? You're, you're... There's a film you should watch called La Grande Bouffe. You ever heard of that? Like, no, I haven't. It's like the, the big feast. It sounds kinky. No, it's not. It's about these three chefs who are obsessed with food, and they, and they're, they're massive egos, and they, um, they uh, challenge each other to come up with the best meal ever, um, and they do that, and then they basically, <laughs> they basically decide they're going to eat till the death. So it's like a duel, but from eating. So they basically, all three of them, are basically cooking for each other and trying to kill each other with these amazing dishes and they just eat until one of them die until they die like labradors like walking walk walk dustbins like what labrador dogs what about them they're just like walking dustbins and they could oh i see yeah because like, they, they just they have no they have they don't stop they're just constantly <laughs> so what was it called le grand boeuf the grand boeuf boeuf b-o-u-f-f-e -F -F -E. le Bouf. grand boeuf i'll send it to you I'll send you a thing really? for it. It's um, it's it's a it's an absolutely bonkers film, but you probably you'll probably enjoy the um. I think well, one thing you were saying before, I've I've never read any um. I just realised once you were talking before, I've never read any. What do you call them? Um, like a, a book about a musician. What are they called? Not biopics. Um, biography, autobiography. I've read none. Oh, well, you know what's a brilliant one to start with, the Elton John one that's just come out is amazing. Is it? Yeah. I've, I've, I've not really... Been... There's only 38 people here, so I can say this. I, I, I've never really been a huge fan of Elton, Elton John's but music. Elton John, Elton John might be one of the 38 people. Well, if he is, I'm sorry about this, but I've never been a huge fan of your music. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, I've never been a huge fan of your music. But apparently, yeah, but his book is absolutely stunning. It's amazing. It's so easy to read. It's so much fun. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. I often find, like, when I, even just on people's Wikipedia pages and stuff, you know, you hear, like, you hear stories about David Bowie and he lived here and he lived there. Or Nina yeah. Simone. I can't help but think how boring my Wikipedia page must look in comparison. Like, born here, lived London, went to Ramsgate. <laughs> She's like, I really need to go and live in Berlin for a while. And then, you know, spend, a, you know, a few months in Ghana in West Africa and then learn this kind of music and da da da. Do you know what I mean? You just want yeah. to, you, you can't help but think about all these amazing eccentric musicians that have just had such full lives. They're different economies though. They, they make money from albums, which we don't make. This is, this is the thing that people don't understand. Like with the amount of music, the amount of music that, that you, the, the amount of kind of people that have heard your music and probably my music, we, we have completely different lifestyle if we were, if this was the 1970s. Yeah, you know, we would have we would be travelling all over the place. We'd be taking six months off and touring around Africa because we'd be able to afford it because because of because of, of all the all the money we, we we would have made from selling our albums. And now we're still having to, which is I'm I'm not going to complain about it because there's nothing you can do. It, but you're just, just pissing yeah. in the wind trying to complain about it because there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, obviously we can try and lobby Spotify and lobby all the, the people to sort of give us a better rate. But the fact remains that it's never going to be the economy that it was where. You'd make an album for five pounds. You set it for ten pounds. You know, it's just yeah, it's, it's yeah. not going to be that economy anymore. So, I mean, there's there's a lot more funding, and there's, there are other ways of making of making money, but it's not quite the free and easy lifestyle that those guys enjoyed. You know, man, born too late. I, I think it's like you know, those guys could do some music that was a bit on the fringes and still kind of live live off it. Whereas now the only people really living off of selling music so, so, are people who are doing stuff that's really, really mainstream, you know, um, without any funding or any kind of anything else as such. It's I, do, I, do I do like to have one of me, you know how you used to work at BIM? Yeah. And again, they'd get in 
musicians to come and yeah. do a one-off workshop. So I, I would talk to a lot of young people there and say to them, you know, what, what, how do you define success? What's your idea of success? Yeah. And they'd say things to me like, I want to be a, no, the deadpan thing, I want to be a multi-million selling artist, yeah. a worldwide artist. And I'm like, hang on, you just made noises with your mouth. You didn't, you didn't actually say anything to me there. All I heard was like, <laughs> and they'd be like, what? Sorry, what? I was like, yeah, you're talking rubbish. And also one thing they didn't realize was that, you know, I do actually make a living from my music. I am lucky enough to be able to make, I mean, right now it's very, very difficult. But, you know, before my shows were canceled, it's like, okay, if you have a good summer of good festival slots, you can make enough money to live on it. Yeah, you can, yeah. Um, um, but that that's kind of like you know and it doesn't mean it, it it's not a huge living no but, but it's reasonable it's, it's yeah, okay yeah. It, it can be reasonable and that's kind of i think there's a lot of young people who don't realize that you haven't got to be a massive artist yeah and you can be clever with how you how you make money as well and how you yeah. you know how you save it and there's other different ways and different avenues of how to do stuff look at idols for example yeah they're a really good example of a diy band mm. Who did? I mean, I'm not a massive fan of their music, but of a band that did things in, on their own terms and being really resourceful themselves. Yeah. And that's what I would like more young people to see. Like, yeah, of course, Billy Eilish is really big and brilliant, but you can also be a smaller artist. And you know, like people like um, Jane Jane Weaver and stuff like that, who's mm. been around, you know, for a long time. And she's like a cult icon almost, mm -hmm. um, and still has this, you know, a, a fan base who are going to follow her forever, and you will always yeah. speak to them. So it, it is possible to not be a huge artist and still have a career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe just um, going and touring Africa, going and hanging out in Tunisia for a year or two might not be that simple. Not the way um, I. The what? what? Not the way I'd like to do it anyway. Plush. <laughs> What's the way you'd like to do it? Really plush? Yeah. Oh, look at this place I'm staying. It's lovely. Buy it. <laughs> I don't have like, any hitchhiking, anything like that. <sighs> so we've got some people here saying, never mind, sold more than all 10 Foo Fighters albums, which is a fact I didn't know. Um, oh, did it? Yeah. And that, that's true. Um, someone, Connor Talbot, saying that Billie Eilish made her album in her bedroom, which is true. Yeah. No, no, I, I love Billie Eilish. I'm also yeah, me too. There's, some really, there's a really great documentary, actually, with her and her brother talking about how they made the music. And it's, it's the resourcefulness. Is, again, it's incredible, you oh, know. I love it. I just mean it's when people, people cite her as an inspiration for how big they want to get. Not, yeah. Not the kind of music or her way in. Because I like, I like her ethos. I like how she is. I mm. love listening to her in interviews, which is really funny. Yeah. She's really smart. She's just really cool. Um, yeah. It's just because she's a huge artist and you get people being like, I want to be a huge artist, not I want to make my own music. Yeah. Like, great music like Billie Eilish. Yeah. That's brilliant. I'd encourage that. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to ask you about your, um, the first single from this new album, which is called Ladies of Babies and Goats for Love. <laughs> and um, you say that it was your brother was making a comment on sexism when he was younger and made a painting of a man embracing a goat with the phrase ladies for babies, goats for love. Did you not say? <laughs> well, I did say that, but a lot of the things that I say aren't true. <laughs> okay, but it also says it's a direct response to all that she wants by Ace of Base. A little bit. It just, I get I get pressured a lot into like having to give press releases. Like, oh no, we must say, like, can I just put a song out? And people aren't sick. I really hate this. Like, it feels like there's a general assumption from some people that the general public are just stupid. And we need to tell them what this is about. It's like, my lyrics are quite literal. And I'm sure people can get their own meaning from them. But then I'm always pushed to do press releases. Which I, I understand why. I totally do. And I love my press team and everybody else. And I think, you know, even my manager finds them a bit tiring at times as well. Like, oh, God, let's just put the song out. But then... You know, get yeah, actually, I had a, I was a bit of a PG version. It's just a funny story. My brother years ago was taking the mick out of one of his friends, and did a painting of his best friend naked holding a goat. And then it did say "ladies for babies," but it said "ladies for babies, goats for fun." So he was, you know, he was implying that his friend liked to get intimate with farmyard animals. 
to make fun of his friend and be jestful. That's all it was about. But that is quite a well worn, a well known phrase, though. Yeah, but it's 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 actually quite a. It's not that PC a phrase. No, it's not PC a phrase at all. Because it refers to people from certain parts of the world. Um, from like Arabic countries, it's a slur. There's like a version of that phrase in certain Arabic countries, which is a real slur. Yeah, which is why I, I wondered if you were referring to it. Well, I, I'm aware of that because um, mm. I also want. I didn't. I wanted to sound jovial. Mm. And I did always remember this image of my brother painting that painting. And yeah. I always thought it was just like, it's always stuck with me. And I wanted to say something about that. I wanted to comment on how women can be expected to live up to stereotypes. Yeah. And I was thinking about loads of songs growing up that I listened to. When you listen back to the lyrics now, you just think, how did you get away with that? Blame? Yeah. I mean, there are songs like Ace of Base, All That She Wants Is Another Baby, She's Going To Get You Boy. Like, all right. Well, it, yeah. Like, can we have the, I think, you know, in 2020, we need like, we need a, a male uh, equivalent of that song because, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that could be a true story, that the Ace of Base. <laughs> but let's, have, let's just have some variety and some alternatives. And um, I just kept thinking of Ladies For Babies, Goats For Love when I was writing it. And yeah. then I, Sang it to Ben Hillier. I was like, "Can I get away with doing this?" <laughs> I can imagine his response. <laughs> he was like, um, "Yeah." <laughs> Is that your Ben Hillier impression? Impression. Um, <laughs> he's been watching. I bet he's watching. Um, <laughs> Ben's like a mixture between Louis Theroux and Mr. Bean. Oh, <laughs> who's that really? Um, that really funny guy, that actor who plays piano. He does like a jazz album recently. Does he more? Oh, recently. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Do you mean um? Do you mean um? What's his name? Oh God, he's. I'm on the same label as him. I should know this. Yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's got. A, oh, okay, this this Carol chatting. I'm gonna. That's, I'm who, gonna, ben um... that's who Ben Hillier looks like. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's where the lyrics came from. And also, I didn't want the album to sound like. Jeff um, Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. That's it. Thanks, my take. Um, Jeff Goldblum, that's it. Uh, what did Ross just write? Roman Atkinson. Very good. Ro Roman. Roman Atkinson. Very clever. Uh oh. And Ross is here, so I've got to be careful now. Yeah, we've got to be careful now. <laughs> this slagging around. She doesn't use Instagram until, and she doesn't. She's not normally on Instagram apart from, apart from now. And yoga tutorials. Huh? And yoga you uh, tutorials. Oh yeah, of course. Which I've not been doing any of that. Have you been doing any of that? No, no, I haven't. I've been, I, I have meant been mean to, but I've been, um, been getting my exercise from, from cycling a lot. Oh yeah. Hmm. Just cycling to central London. Me and Ben Hillier over the years, we've lost a lot of good friends to yoga. <laughs> <laughs> are you come? Are you gonna come out tonight? Oh, I'm so sorry. I would come out, but I need to work on my chakra. Ah, chakra off. <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted you, but I interrupted you brutally by saying Jeff Goldblum really loudly while you're in mid-flow. Sorry about that. Oh, anyway, that's what was... I mean, the, I d yeah, I wanted I wanted the album with a lot of the lyrics to be slightly more jovial and tongue-in-cheek. And tongue you know, yeah. not, and then there are serious subjects that I'm speaking about, you know. Yeah. A lot of the time I'm talking about the policing of women's bodies. Yeah. The song on the album called Walk, and it's honestly about... It's about the fact that I... You know, I would have trouble walking from my house in London to the tube station without being harassed in some way. Yeah. You know, physical, be it physical or um, or verbal. Verbal, yeah. And that's just a fact, you know. And then just yeah. after I finished the album, I got I got physically attacked twice in a week. Really? Um, one time a guy just pushed me over in the street for no reason, and another time a guy was kind of making an advance at me, and I'd said like, "All right." just simmer down and he came up to me and grabbed me by the throat really yeah the, but these well, the things, daytime the daylight uh like evening early evening but these things do happen and yeah so i'm not making light of these subjects but i didn't want to make a dour sounding album I no. mean, sonically i wanted to have fun with it you know yeah but um but I'm, I'm still not taking away i'm not trying to detract from the fact that these are really serious subjects that that we're talking about yeah, I don't think it, I think in a way you can actually make it more if because if it draws people in, 
you know, you're drawing people in, you're making people kind of listen to it. Oh, that's interesting. What's that about? That's quite funny. And then they look a bit closer at the lyrics and realize there's a serious message. Yeah. I mean, it's also, I think there's something with a woman you know, telling these stories, as a woman telling these stories and not sounding defeated. You know, like yeah. laughing and like, you know what? You did what to me? <laughs> Pathetic. And yeah. it's, there is that thing that people say, you know, there's nothing a man hates worse than being laughed at or humiliated. Yeah. Mm. So you, you don't want to, I don't want to be perceived as weak. And I yeah. kind of, you know, laugh at these subjects as well because they're so stupid. Mm. And, you know, they're, they're awful. We kind of, Take the power back, almost. I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. By and, it, and that's that's a, that's a really. So uh, this is another question I was going to ask you. When you, because um, I noticed that this album and and the last album, I don't know about the ones before, had had a sort of quite definite themes about them. Do you sit down before you start writing and say, right, I'm going to write with this theme in mind, and then write to that theme, or do you kind of write a song and then? write another that's similar and see a theme emerge and then pursue it how does it how does it happen yeah it, it varies all the time right the first album i was writing it was actually a really good friend of in their own life who had mental health illness so i started writing about him and mental health illnesses and i thought this could be a bit too i don't know if i want to write about this and then during the course of writing that another close friend Right. He took his own life. And so I was like, well, I have to write about this. I have yeah. to write about the stigmas towards people for, suffering from mental health illnesses. And sometimes that's how it works. You just think, like, I have to write this, you know. Yeah. Like, second album was my breakup album. Um, right. Everyone's got to have one of those, though. Yeah, but with that album, did you did you just start, it just all just kind of flowed out and that was it? Or did you say, I'm going to write an album about my breakup? Yeah, on my, on my second album, I was like, I'm going to write an album because I'm paying. Right. I'm, I wanted it to be much poppier, much more commercial. I was like, I'm going to be dead famous. Yeah, right. Really piss him off. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's the rules. Everybody has to have a breakup album. The third one, obviously, was Holiday Destination. And, again, it was, it was, it was difficult. It was almost like the environment that you're in dictates mm. what you write. Because it was impossible to write about anything else at the time, rather than the other than the plight of refugees and the civil war, which was then in Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. As, what was the first song you wrote for Holiday Destination? Then Holiday Destination. Right. Okay. So then that set the tone for all the rest of the songs, basically. Yeah. So you decided after you wrote that song, okay, I'm going to stick with this theme and I'm going to try and carry yeah. on with this because you presumably you've written the previous album had been if it was a breakup album had been from coming from quite an emotional place so yeah. this was more maybe from an objective place or was it like how you react emotionally to these subjects like it's still coming from an emotional place but with an objective point of view yeah. or still from an emotional place but with Holiday yeah. Destination there was also there was the real empathy for what people were going through at the time yeah there was also that thing where well, we're only really able to empathize if we can look out and then look in yeah. to kind of understand. But also I think because my father is an, uh, he is an immigrant um, and he was born in Pakistan and he, you know, his journey to England, I was assume was just one plane journey. It wasn't. It was right. a difficult journey for a young man with no money to make. Yeah having to beg and borrow and steal his way through so many countries, you know. Mm. He's a really marvellous, inspiring guy. And I think mm. because of my dad being an immigrant as well, and there was there was a kind of, um, there was almost that kind of like, the song's like out the way. Mm. You no, know, because yeah. there was that, there was no, there was a lot of negative attention or uh, towards people seeking refuge, people who were displaced, mm. um, be it political, uh, migrants, you know, leaving a political situation, or economic migrants just wanting a better life. But there really was this awful kind of, you know, we, we don't want you, we're not bothered, you know. I'm yeah. right. And then I felt that hostility, you know, even being a mixed race person as well, mm. especially, you know, being a Muslim woman as well, was yeah. worried about this kind of rise in nationalism. Yes. And so that speech, that hate speech started to hit home as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really emotional album for that as well. Yeah, right. And then this one, again, has got a theme. So which song came first on this one? I can't remember. I'm no, uh, oh, I don't know. I have no idea. But what was, 
Was there a, was there a certain point where you realised that you had a theme on the go, or did you just did you decide before because the previous ones had a theme, previous two have had a theme? Do you think okay, I'm, I'm, I'm it's going to have a theme, or did you just kind of write yeah, and see what happens? Then again, that's, that 